everyone. Welcome to Kicks Kids Online Experience. If you're joining us for the first time this week, my name is Montana, and I'm here to tell you all about today's video. But first, I'd like to share with you some photos of our awesome Kicks Kids from last week. Here they are. If you want to have your photo featured in one of our videos, you can send them to natasha.davidson55 at gmail.com. All right, today we have for you a yummy snack, a true story, and a really fun craft. If any of that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. Hey everyone, this is Allison, and we're in my kitchen today instead of Natasha's, and I'm going to show you how to make a peach and strawberry bruschetta. So what you're going to need is some balsamic vinegar, a loaf of bread, it's best to have French bread or Italian bread or a nice baguette, you're going to want some goat cheese, some strawberries, and some peaches. I just have some from the can because it's easier than going and peeling my own, but if you want to peel your own and have some fresh peaches with your bruschetta, go right ahead. I also have some sage. The recipe calls for basil, but I think that I'm going to use sage. You're also going to want a cutting board and a couple of knives with your parent's supervision, of course. And a baking sheet and of course a preheated oven to 350 degrees so I've done that it actually beeped quite recently so it's already preheated so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to take your loaf of bread I'm going to open mine up so you're going to take out your loaf of bread and you're going to put it right on your cutting board and you're going to slice it up pretty thin. So I've got all my bread cut up and so I'm going to take this bread and I'm going to put it right on this cutting board so that I can toast it in the oven. I don't want the end. I'm going to cut another slice. I have a little bit of room, so I'm going to just separate them. I'm going to just separate them, and that way they'll be able to all toast individually. Alright, so I'm just going to pop these cloud boys right in the oven. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your strawberries are clean so I'm going to go right ahead and wash them. So now I've got my strawberries nice and clean but they still have their leaves on them so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut all of the leaves off. You don't actually need that many strawberries for this recipe. It says only to use 10 but I really like strawberries. I'm going to use 12. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to cut off the top, set it to the side, and then we also want to cut up our strawberries nice and small. So we're going to do that. We're going to put all of the little pieces in a bowl. So I'm going to just cut off all the heads first and then I'll do some dicing. So now we've got all the heads cut off, we've got all the strawberries nice and whole. So now we're going to do some dicing. Oh. The toast is already done, so I'll take it out to cool. We're going to want to use oven mitts because 
these were in at a pretty hot temperature and you don't want to burn yourself. So I'm going to take these right out. Ooh, they smell good. They're nice and hard. Pretty nice if I do say so myself. A little crunchy, a little soft, a little spongy, a little, a lot nice, I think. So I'm going to go right back to cutting. So now I'm going to put all of these strawberries right into the bowl. But the thing is, we're not making strawberry bruschetta. We're making strawberry peach bruschetta. So I'm going to clean the strawberry juice off of my hands. And then I'm going to open up the peaches. So I've got my peaches right here. And I'm gonna just open them right up. All right, so you're going to want to sort of drain these out a little because the peaches in the can are a little juicy. A little too juicy. They've got extra juice in them, so I'm gonna drain that out. So now I've got my peaches in a colander. So what I'm going to do is, similar to the strawberries, except there's no hulls on these, dice them up. All right, I've got my peaches all cut up, so I'm going to add them to the bowl as well. And then I'm gonna wash my hands again, because now they're peach juicy. There's no winning. Well, there is. The winning is the bruschetta at the end, but you know, you still get juicy. So with my suddenly not juicy hands, I'm going to take the balsamic vinegar and I'm going to unscrew it. And then I'm gonna just put a little drizzle over top. Just a little. This is strong stuff, like. Oof. Yeah, that's strong stuff. It smells strong, it tastes strong, so you don't want to add too much. Just a nice little drizzle. Just like that. And then you put the cap back on, and you take a spoon, and you mix it all together. Oh, it smells really good, guys. And there we have it. We've got our mixture. So now, all we have to do is put it all together. The next step is to take our goat cheese, nice and soft, nice and spreadable. And we're going to take the scissors out just to open the bread, because this doesn't really want to open by itself. And so we'll make it open with some help. All right, so we've got it nice and open. So we're going to take our knife and our bread, and we're just going to, just like you're buttering your bread, just spread it on, except a little bit more than you would use for buttering. All right, so once you've put your goat cheese on all of your toasties, you're going to want to take your mixture once more and if you can get it you should use a slotted spoon because you know balsamic vinegar it really is strong and you don't want too much of the juices to get through but you do want to scoop Scoop it right on there. It's going to be so good. You don't want to wait too long after you've made them. Partially because you can't wait. But also because if you wait too, too long, then they'll start to get soggy because even with a slotted spoon, you can't quite get all of the juices out. So, and if you don't have a slotted spoon, you can just use a normal spoon and kind of wriggle it over the top of the bowl for a little and try and get all the juices out. So yeah. But that is strawberry peach bruschetta. I'm gonna try one because 
I want to know how it tastes. Oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty neat. It's really interesting. The cheese and the fruit is super cool. I think you guys should make this. It's pretty neat. And if you don't like it, surely someone else will. Well, I'm gonna send you guys off to the story. And that might even be more fun. Maybe not. Not as yummy. Bye! Hey guys, we're continuing on with our series, learning about the fruit of the spirit. Today's memory verse comes from John 14, 27. You can pause the video, get your Bible, and read it. Ready? I got mine. All right, let's find this. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Isn't that cool? God gives us true peace in the head and in the heart. So we don't have to be upset or scared or worried. Let's read that again. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be afraid or troubled. Great. Our lesson today, you may have already guessed, is about peace. Peace can be kind of hard to understand sometimes, because it's not an outward thing that we can see. Sure, you can sometimes see it, it usually looks like quiet, still, and rest. But peace is more something we can feel deep inside us. When we have no worry or fear, we experience peace. Let's look at an example from the Bible. Last week, we learned about Paul and some of the trouble he got into. But sometimes, he even went to jail because people really didn't like him spreading the word about Jesus. Before he went to jail, though, he met a young man named Timothy. Timothy had great faith and really loved God. While Paul was in prison, he wrote letters to Timothy to encourage him and help him spread God's word. He gave some advice, reminded him to work hard, but he also reminded him that God gives us peace in our lives and not fear. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 together. Grab your Bibles again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. That sounds a lot like God gives us the power to not be afraid. He gives us the power of peace. Just like joy, peace comes from our relationship with Jesus. When we walk closely with him, like Paul and Timothy did, he calms us with his love. And as we abide in him, we can trust that our helper, the Holy Spirit, will guide us and take away our worry and fear. When we learn how to enjoy the peace of his presence, we can share it with others by being a peacemaker. So, I've got a question for you. You can talk about it with the people around you, or you can just think about it. What does real peace feel like? Pause the video and think about it. Peace comes when I am close to Jesus. Can you say that with me? Peace comes when I am close to Jesus. Great! That's really nice to know. Jesus gives us the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. Be sure to come back next week to learn about the next fruit of the Spirit. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us your peace, no matter how the world hurts us or makes things just a little crazy. Remind us that you are here with us and that we can calm down every once in a while and just be in your presence. Thank you for giving us that gift. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hello everyone, welcome to the craft. Today we're gonna to be making a dove. What you're gonna need is tape, scissors, a gray and yellow marker, and two pieces of white paper. On the first sheet of white paper, you're gonna have this, but I have to draw it out. We're gonna get a dove. After you have it drawn out, you can cut it out. And, or color it first and then cut it out. I'm just going to cut it out.
Once you have it cut out, you can color in a part for the beak and then add eyes. Color it in on both sides. Give him some eyes. He looks a little wonky, but that's okay. And then with your second piece of paper, cut it in half and then you're going to fold it down just like this on one side and then flip it over and do it again. And then you're gonna repeat that the whole way down your paper. Give it to the other one. Once you have your wings folded up like this, you're gonna take your tape and make it long enough so that it will go over this folded part here. Like this. And then do that to the other side. And then fan out the wings. And there you have a bird, a dove, yeah. that represents peace. That was a great video. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I really like learning about peace. It's nice to know that you can have peace even if you can't have quiet. If you like this video, please like and share so that other people can learn about the fruit of the spirit. Thanks again for watching. Bye! Oh, hey guys, come here, look at this. Wow, look at that. What is it?